Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Wednesday, December 9th. And from a big Buckeye update to a fight against Facebook, I have all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. But first, let's take a quick look at our weather because something exciting may be happening tonight. A recent Earth-directed coronal mass ejection from the sun, which is basically a large ejection of plasma and magnetic field. Wild, I know. But uh, because of that, we will have the possible viewing of the northern lights tonight. And skies are supposed to clear a bit in a lot of different areas, so we have a good shot at catching a glimpse. Especially those of you up in Michigan, you are in the best spot to see the northern lights tonight. But us in Ohio, northern Ohio, we have a shot as well. So if you haven't already, head outside, take a look. Let me know if you do see it in the comments. But if you do head out there, make sure you bundle up. It is supposed to get a little chilly tonight. Temperatures are going to drop into the mid 20s. But temperatures will gradually rise the rest of this week with highs slowly climbing toward the weekend. Saturday does continue to be the day to watch though as widespread rain showers are likely, especially by later in the day. Rain totals could get to half an inch by early Sunday morning. A wind shift will usher back in the cooler December weather for Sunday and then early into our next week. Now let's talk about football because I finally have some good news for you Buckeye fans. The Big Ten is allowing Ohio State to play in the conference title game against Northwestern. The Big Ten Conference Administrators Council voted today to get rid of the policy that teams must play six games to qualify for the conference championship game. This is important because after the cancellation of their game against Michigan, Ohio State has only played five games. So in a statement, the Big, the Big Ten said, quote, the decision was based on a competitive analysis which determined the Ohio State would have advanced to the Big Ten football championship game based on its undefeated record and head-to-head -head victory over Indiana regardless of a win or loss against Michigan. So there you have it. The Big Ten title game is scheduled for December 19th in Indianapolis. And while we are focused on Ohio, let's get a quick look at the current coronavirus data from the Department of Health. As a reminder, we are finally caught up on that backlog of antigen tests, so the data is a bit more clear than it has been in recent weeks. With that in mind, today there were 10,094 new cases reported compared to the 21-day average of 9,585, 84 deaths reported compared to the 21-day average of 65, 464 hospitalizations compared to the 21-day average of 356, and 49 new ICU admissions compared to the 21-day average of 37. And as a reminder, the 10 p.m. until 5 a.m. curfew in the state that was supposed to end Thursday has been extended. Governor Mike DeWine is scheduled to hold a press conference tomorrow at 2 p.m., uh, and he's going to describe that a little bit more. We don't know if there are going to be any adjustments to that, um, how long it'll be extended for. So hopefully that'll become more clear after his press conference tomorrow. You can watch that live on YouTube, on our Facebook page, and on WTOL.com. But here is one positive story out of Ohio and one that definitely got me in the holiday spirit. A Cleveland area Taylor Swift fan set up a holiday light display centered around the singer's Christmas song, Christmas Tree Farm. And the video caught the attention of thousands of people, including Taylor Swift herself. How cool is that? Sarah J. Bailey posted the video on Friday and wrote that in addition to bringing all of that cheer, her family would be accepting food donations to benefit a local food bank. Well, like I said, people noticed, and Taylor Swift even reached out to Sarah personally to let her know how much she loved the display and that she made a donation to the Art Community Hunger Center in Sarah's hometown of Twinsburg, Ohio. So something positive to come out of the internet. You love to see it. But unsurprisingly, not everyone is happy with social media. In fact, 46 U.S. states, Guam and D.C., have launched an antitrust suit against Facebook in the hopes of splitting up the alleged monopoly. New York State Attorney General Letitia James announced today that she and 47 other attorneys general, including Ohio's Dave Yost and Michigan's Dana Nessel, are suing Facebook for what they call its anti-competitive conduct. The complaint claims that during the last decade, Facebook thwarted competition and reduced consumer privacy for profit. In fact, here's a quote from Ohio's Attorney General, Dave Yost. He said, Facebook's unchecked power has grabbed an alarming level of control over what we see, say, buy, and even who our friends are. 
So in case you don't know, here's how Facebook's business works. It doesn't charge users a monetary fee, but instead it provides its services in exchange for a user's time, attention, and personal data. Facebook then monetizes its business by selling advertising to firms that attach value to user engagement and highly targeted advertising that Facebook can deliver due to the giant mound of data it collects from users, their friends, and their interests. And in an effort to maintain market dominance, Facebook users uh, Facebook uses a number of different ways to hold back competing services and as Mark Zuckerberg has put it, build a competitive moat around the company. Now separately, but in coordination with that big state coalition, the Federal Trade Commission has also filed a complaint against Facebook, which is again headed by New York Attorney General Letitia James. and has an executive committee made up of the attorneys general of California, Colorado, Florida, Iowa, Nebraska, North Carolina, Ohio, Tennessee, and the District of Columbia. So the states are asking the court to stop what they call Facebook's illegal anti-competitive conduct and block the company from continuing that behavior into the future. They're asking to restrain Facebook from making any future acquisitions uh, valued at or in excess of $10 million without advance notice. And the court is asked to provide any additional relief that it deems appropriate. So we'll keep you updated on all of that whenever we get new information. And keeping the legal news rolling, President-elect Joe Biden's son, Hunter, is facing a federal investigation over his tax affairs. The investigation by the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office was disclosed in a statement by Biden's transition office today. Hunter Biden said this in response, quote, I take this matter very seriously, but I am confident that a professional and objective review of these matters will demonstrate that I handled my affairs legally and appropriately, including with the benefit of professional tax advisors. His attorneys did not immediately return messages for comment. Now, let's get into some local news. For starters, the Bowser High School Rebels will now be known as the Bowser Blue Racers. More than 2,000 people signed an online petition in support of changing the mascot from the Rebels to something more modern and inclusive. And today, members of the committee that worked to change the mascot announced their results. So what is a blue racer? It is a non-venomous stake that can be found in Swan Creek Metro Park. And why did the mascot change? Well, the image of the rebel that alumni at Bowser wanted gone showed a Confederate soldier on a horse, which they say represents years of oppression. They have uh, These talks have been going on since June, and the committee said they received several hundred submissions of what the mascot change should be. Members said ultimately it was important to them to keep the school colors the same and pick a mascot that would represent all of the school sports teams well. Thus, we have the Bowser Blue Racers. I kind of like it. Now, we do need to shift some to some more unfortunate news. The body of a Pemberville man was found earlier today after he went missing Tuesday night. The Wood County Sheriff's Office said 76-year-old James Jackyard walked away from his home outside of Pemberville around 8, 10 p.m. Jackyard had a series of medical issues and it showed signs of dementia. Police said he was confused during the day and had wanted to go toward the Perrysburg area. The sheriff's office said his body was found just before noon today. And dozens of volunteers helped in the search as well as a number of different police departments from throughout the community. And it's been three months to the day since the search for toddler Braylon Noble turned into a death investigation and still there are no answers. The three-year-old Braylon, who was autistic and nonverbal, went missing for nearly a week in early September before police found his body in his apartment complex pool. Initial details of the autopsy found no obvious signs of trauma, and drowning has not been ruled out yet as a cause of death, and so far, no manner of death has been officially determined. And there's no time frame for the toxicology results, the conclusion of which the coroner said at the time could depend on if there was anything in his system. A spokesperson for the Toledo Police Department said this, while the death investigation remains ongoing, police cannot charge someone with homicide at this time when the cause of death is not ruled a homicide. There is no further update at this time. A call to both the coroner's office and one of Braylon's family members went unanswered this morning. But before I go, I do wanna share a bit more positivities because there are ways you can help Kids in our area have a great Christmas this year. The WTOL Gift of Joy campaign sponsored by PNC has kicked off to help benefit area children who are served by Lucas County Children's Services. So there are a few options for your donations. You can do this online with Click It, Ship It, Gift It. You can shop online and ship a gift directly to WTOL 11 Studios. It will help Lucas County Children's Services 
gift it to a child. You're asked to donate by December 14th, just to make sure your gift gets there in time. Two, click it, ship it, gift it while you're shopping online. All you have to do is choose whatever gift you'd like a child to have and use the WTOL11 address as the shipping address. And tomorrow, this is exciting, we're hosting our fourth annual downtown toy drop in the station parking lot at 7.30 North Summit Street from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m. Everyone is encouraged to drive through and donate a new unwrapped toy uh, to the drive. Just make sure your donation is in the trunk of your car so we can ensure a touchless experience. And if you can't make it out tomorrow, it's no big deal. You can drop off your gift in a drop box at a number of local spots like York dealerships, Lazy Boys, Burger Kings, and more. I have a link to all the specific locations in the description of this video, so check it out if you're interested. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen and now you are in the loop.